So, yeah, guys, uh, this is episode two of the VAU podcast. We got Mr. John Kilmer, and uh, we're super excited to have him. How you doing, John? I'm good, man. How are you? Fantastic. Um, CJ, goes- CJ, what's your last name? Febles? Febles, yeah. Febles? <laughs> it's yeah. Pre- is, is that French? Febles? No, no, I'm actually half Puerto Rican. Febles is Puerto Rican? <laughs> Yeah, Febles. I'm uh, I'm oh, half Febles. Puerto Rican, and then my other half is like Swedish and German. So I'm like this crazy mutt type of thing. That's I, that's 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 incredible. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, but yeah, like this is only my second time running a podcast. I have one episode out, and um, it's just like it's incredible to have you as a guest because I've been a fan of everything you've done, and um, you know the whole mic movement and. Just everything that you've been a part of, I've been literally a fan of since I was like a kid and I'm 24 now. So it's just crazy to see, you know, things come into fruition and you're like on the podcast. So just again, thank you so much for being here. Of course, man. And I love that you're starting a show. And uh, I, I I want anyone to start a podcast because I think it's just a great way to get your ideas out there. Um, and I mean, for me and Mike, even like I, we lived together for seven years and now we don't live together anymore for the first time in seven years. And it's the way we keep in touch is like by doing podcasts, which is kind of crazy. And I, I think it's a great way for people to stay in touch with each other, having a show with each other to do stuff like that remotely. And uh, that's kind of like how he and I catch up on each other's lives is like every week or two, we just hop on a podcast together for, uh, you know, Y and K or for only Steve's or something. So I love it. Can't say enough good things about podcasting. Yeah, man. And dude, like, it's so cool that you guys stay in touch through podcasts because it's just like, like you said, it's a good way to have a long form conversation. And like, when I watch your guys' podcast, I'm an only Steve member, by the way. Just Let's saying. go. Bro. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, man. It's the best money I've ever spent. Uh, <laughs> um, But yeah, like when I watch you guys' podcast, you can tell there's that authentic connection. There's that authentic catching up going on on that podcast. So it's pretty cool, man. Yeah. I mean, Um, he and I I just go back since like the the beginning of time, really. It's been like, wow, like almost 12 years now. So, (laughs) and it's like, it was for for the majority of that time when we were like all living under one roof. It's like, I saw those guys more than I saw my own family. So it just, it's like a whole, it's beyond friendship. It's like a like a a whole second family type of thing so it's uh it's been weird it's been weird being away and uh yeah i i I don't think i've seen him in like six months so that's been the weirdest thing like him blue and versace and all them i haven't seen him in like six months so it's been a weird adjustment maybe versace's lost even more weight I don't know. I can't keep (laughs) in touch with him he's he's still packing it on man i relate (laughs) to that big boy I'm a dude, a big boys unite out here. We need each other, man. Hell yeah. <laughs> um, uh. So yeah, like I have like a couple, a couple of notes, you know, I'm a big, uh, big note guy. So, you know, what's like a day in the life like for John Kilmer right now? Man, it's been a wild six months for me. Like, as I just mentioned, um, if you were asking this question six months ago or a year ago, the answer would be totally different. Uh, but now it's, uh, it's been like a super eventful year. I'm, uh, I'm, I just bought my first home earlier than last year. Oh, thank you. So I am settling into Nashville. I'm a homeowner now. It's like super adult shit going on. I'm like learning about things like property tax and like, like utility bills and stuff. I don't even know mm-hmm. what's going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm still struggling to furnish the place because I've never had that much space in my life. I'm building my own studio out of there. So a, a lot of my energy has been going into that. Um, I've, you know, eight months ago, I, I started, uh, seeing someone like dating someone. So like I'm navigating a new relationship, which is, uh, which has been great. And also congrats. Oh, then thank you for that. I'm actually at her place right now. She's really nice enough to, uh, let me use her bedroom to, to do this recording. So shout out her for that. Shout um, and then besides that, yeah, it's like, it's, it's been interesting just like finding my identity outside of living with the guys. Cause it's that, that was kind of like my whole life for seven, seven, eight years. And, you know, when we would be on tour with each other, but then we'd go home and we'd live with each other and it'd just be nonstop, like, you know, being with the dudes. But, uh, now it's kind of like finding an identity outside of that and just becoming my own man outside of that. And a lot, it's, it's been, it's been a journey to say the least, a lot, a lot of ups and downs, but, I know it's a long-winded answer. Uh, I know maybe you're looking for like skincare routines and what I do throughout <laughs> the day, but on a, a psychological level, it's just been kind of like uh, f- you know, becoming my own man outside of what I've been used to for about a decade now. 
Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, you know, normal to think that when you switch and you have that whole new, like you, you planted your seed in your Nashville, right? Mm-hmm. Nashville. Yeah. So you, you guys are, are, you're out there and you know, you have a piece of land and you have a house, like it's big time moves, man. So there's nothing, nothing else you can do, but be grateful and just kind of like enjoy the process. I was looking for you to be like, oh yeah, my spiritual morning routine. I cold plunge. <laughs> I read seven pages. I mean, we we can get into that. I mean, I, I, I try to have morning routines. It's tough, but like, I mean, I, I uh, yeah, I have like, I, I wake up and I have like my morning shake of the day. I got a nice new Vitamix that I spent way too much money on. And I just Ooh. like, I, I blend up all the nutrients for the day. <laughs> Ooh, there you go. Um. And then, yeah, fitness, obviously a big part of my life. Uh, yeah, I try, try to get to the gym three, four days a week and then uh, building out a studio. So like I like to, you know, get, um, keep, keep it creative throughout the day, whether yeah. it's, uh, I I mean, I don't know how much you know about me, but as far as like creativity goes, I'm, I'm interested in just so many things, uh, yeah, producing music, engineering music, podcasting, um, video editing, video production, uh it, it the list just goes on and on. So I like to just flex those muscles every every day. Um, just really enjoying the process of those things, not That's getting awesome. too caught up with the outcome of them, but just enjoying the process of them. And uh, I'm actually taking a pretty big step back from drinking too, which has been uh, pretty amazing, man. <laughs> pretty amazing. Not not cold turkey. I'm not going to say I've been like sober for. I mean, it's just like I'm not. I'm like completely stepping away from binge binge drinking, and like I, I usually stop at one these days. Um, and I try to go most days without drinking at all, but just like one drink here and there. And that's been somewhat of a challenge, uh, to do, you know, it's, it's going from as much as we used to drink to that. It's been pretty tough, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm sticking with it because I just know it's good for me. Dude. Yeah. Congratulations, man. That's huge. Um, I can kind of relate to that too. Like I haven't smoked in over, over a year and a half now. I smoked used to what? Be- weed 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 okay yeah i used to smoke a lot of weed and you know every day every night and it was just like it got to a point where it wasn't good for me anymore so i just you know just let it go and um you know i feel i feel fresh i feel clear you know so it's a good Mm -hmm. feeling nothing against anyone who smokes weed i'm an advocate for it for a lot of reasons but yeah just Just ups and downs ups and downs for sure yeah like it's funny like now that i'm drinking less i'm definitely smoking more and my and i'm like i'm I'm not a daytime smoker i'm usually like an end of the day before i go to sleep just kind of unwind kind of smoker and uh my my issue with it is that I just get the munchies so bad, man. Like so, so bad. <laughs> like so yeah. bad. Like, I wish I things... realized that a hundred pounds ago. <laughs> <laughs> the things I eat, man. The things I eat after I smoke. It's like I have no like discipline whatsoever. It's just like whatever's in front of me, it's getting eaten. <laughs> what's your what's your go to? What's your go to little munchie snack? Oh my god. The 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 worst thing that could have happened in this society is uh the company GoPuff. Have you heard of that? No. GoPuff is this company. It's like a delivery service that um, is originally created for smokers, I think. That's why it's called GoPuff. But it's expanded to the point where it's a delivery service where it's just like for munchies, more or less, or like anything grocery food or snack related. And you can get more stuff on it now, like toiletries or whatever. But man, it's like it's cheap. And at like any hour of the day, you can just order whatever munchies you want in like 30 minutes. Is that your doorstep? That's cool. I mean, <laughs> so, cool to cool, but you know, yeah, but now it's like way too convenient to just like yeah. stuff your face with shit. So like, <laughs> I'm just yeah, I, I always just go crazy for the snacks. And uh, if I'm high, like you can't stop me. So <laughs> uh, I, I commend me. you for cutting back on the smoking because I know that's hard too. Yeah, it was definitely a challenge. I'm around people who smoke, so it's like, <laughs> yeah, know, it's, well, it's kind of tough. Drinking too, man. I mean, it's everywhere. You, know, yeah. you can't find anyone who doesn't drink. It's impossible. Yeah. So, I mean, kudos to both of us, man. We're, we're getting it done and uh, moving forward. So I guess, you know, the next thing I wanted to ask you was, uh, I know you worked with like multiple artists mm-hmm. and um, I know you worked with that guy, 44 Phantom. Yeah. And you helped him. And like, are there any other emerging artists that you're kind of keeping up with these days? Yeah, it's it's funny you ask that because I say like a couple months ago, it's becoming fashionable now and popular to become an independent artist where uh, it never really used to be the case. And I say fashionable because it's just becoming more doable, I guess, just with a lot of the things out there uh, for discovery like TikTok and uh, business models like we do with Only Steve's like subscription models and uh, just ways to get discovered. You can do it independently now. So I've been getting reached out uh, by a lot, like a lot of artists have been reaching out that I've known in the past that are like, oh, I'm independent now, or 
or they're, they started independently and they're starting to see a lot of success now. Um, I can, I can name a couple just right off the bat. I mean, um, I'm buddies with Arizona Zervas who had that song, uh, Roxanne, who I'm sure yeah, you've heard. And, certainly. and I've known him for a really long time. I mean, we, we, we worked, I want to say like 2014 or earlier, we worked when, back when I was living in New York and he was even going by a different artist name back then. And uh, he opened sh some shows for us um, in the coming years. Uh, still back in the day, like when we were doing Baltimore shows, he would open for us. And he, after he came up with Roxanne, which is, you know, one of the biggest songs in the world for multiple months, Mm -hmm. uh, he was signed to Columbia, I believe for a couple of years and he just finished up his, uh, label deal and now he's fully independent and he wants to go that route independently. And, um, we've talked a few times here and there just about, uh, he, you know, he was asking about the only Steve's model of, of how we do that. And I've just been kind of, he's been kind of picking my brain and we've just been catching up a little bit here and there, but I'm so excited for him to be independent because, uh, he's such a talented kid and his music's so good. And I'm really excited to see what he does this year. He's got some new music coming out independently. Yeah. Uh, and then secondly, I've been talking to uh, this new artist, Nick D. I don't know if you've heard of him. Certainly, and I, yeah. yeah, I've had, had him on my show and uh, he was nice enough to come on my show, the power hour and do an interview. And uh, we've, we've kind of been bouncing off each other, like ideas and stuff uh, the past couple of months too. And he's doing a lot of cool stuff. And he's one of the only other artists I know that are besides Mike, that is just truly, truly independent, really doing it himself. And he utilizes things like TikTok really, really well. Yeah. And he's yeah. one of those artists where, I mean, I, he, I, maybe he can correct me if I'm wrong, but like, I don't think he's done a ton of live shows, but he's been able to find so much success just through the, the, the uh, content discovery of TikTok. Yep. And he, and he's just a workhorse, man. Like he puts so much music out. Um, he said he has like over a hundred song, 150 songs, like just waiting to come out, like done just like in the, in the back burner. Yeah. And he comes out with music every couple of weeks. So He's an absolute beast and I, I really respect what he's doing as well. And um, I hope to keep in touch with him too, just because uh, I just respect him so much. Dude, that's awesome, man. You know, like it's crazy that you catch the wave on these younger artists as they're coming up. Like for example, Arizona, he said back in 2014, it's cool that you can catch the wave early and then you see them rise and then you can kind of like, compare and contrast like where they were that's been the, um, the the most fun part about looking back and you know I'm, I'm 34 now and i've been we've been working in this for about 12 years now yeah and it it's it, it, at some points it's sad because it's like oh i'm getting old and you know you think you're those years behind you were like your quote unquote like glory days but i, I don't see it that way i mean i i think you know, every day is my glory day. So I, I, I just so, like think every day is a gift, but I, you, you look back and I'm, I'm grateful to be able to look back on like, you know, six years ago, seven years ago, eight years ago and see those type of people come up, uh, and just like kind of seeing their journey and, and being around long enough to see other people's journey. It's, it's just really dope to see. That's amazing, man. Yeah. Um, I know you said Arizona was asking you about the, uh, the only Steve's and whatnot. So mm -hmm. I had a question for you. Like, do you ever think it's too early for a, a, a younger artist? Like say like myself, I have a very mm -hmm. tiny, small audience yeah. and um, I'm still establishing my sound. I'm still trying to gain the awareness. Do you ever think it's too early to roll out a, a platform like an only Steve's or a subscription platform? Um, I don't think so. I think it depends what your expectations are. If you don't have any expectations, then you should just start as as soon as you want. Like, I think it's good not to have expectations because then you just, you know, if, if you only have like 10 people that subscribe to you, you'd be like, Oh, well, like I really thought I was going to have 50. So it could, uh, it could bring you down and discourage you from continuing forward. But, uh, if you don't have any expectations, which should be the case, then you, yeah, a hundred percent, you should start building it as soon as possible. Because I remember when we started about two years ago doing that business model, no one in music was doing anything like that. I mean, even to this day, a lot of musicians still aren't doing it, but right. no one two years ago was doing it. And when we started doing it, a lot of people were like, you know, what, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> doing a, a monthly subscription model. Uh, like, it, like we started really slow. And I remember the first couple of months we had like a hundred subscribers and and like a, the next month was like 175. And then it was like next month after that, it was like 280. And uh, it was, de it wasn't an overnight success at all. It was, a, it was a build. So uh, for anyone, I, I think people are becoming more desensitized to a monthly subscription model for creators. Whereas two years ago, that wasn't the case. So uh, if you're just starting out and you're still growing a fan base, um, I would say just jump on it right away. You know, it's, yeah. 
even if you just start out with three people that subscribe to you, I mean, you, you have to start the foundation eventually and just detach from the results and just keep building it. No, that's great advice. I love how you said people are becoming desensitized to the subscription model and people are mm -hmm. handing over credit cards now. Like it's, it's a big deal. So that's awesome to see, man. I'm a digital marketer. I work at an agency mm -hmm. and um, we do a lot of corporate stuff like real estate stuff, but it's always cool to apply what we learn in digital marketing and apply it to artistry because at the end of the day, artists are businesses. So yeah, really exactly. Cool, and you guys have been the example for so long. So, it, you know, it's only right that, you know, you guys have the, have the reins to give advice on that, you know? I will give it to Mike. He is very, um, he's always trying to learn and always taking in new information and like keeping his ear to the ground with yeah. how things should be marketed. Cause when you're independent, you have no machine behind you. There's no, there's no one like, you know, putting a hundred grand into your new song to get it on the radio or to get it on playlists or to get it out there. Right. It's just, you're kind of relying on yourself to get it out there and you have to utilize things like social media and, you know, all these like algorithmic things like uh, Instagram reels and TikTok to, to just get new eyes on you. Cause there's, I mean, I, I saw the interesting stat that a uh, hundred thousand songs get released every day now on DSPs, which is amazing, which is crazy. Cool. I mean, it's great because you, you're getting so much content out there and new music, but at the same time as an artist, like how do you get discovered by new people with all right. that shit coming out every day? So, um, you have to keep your ear to the ground and you have to be willing to adjust and, and find new ways to get your stuff out there. Totally agree. Yeah. It's almost like detrimental to like have so many songs coming out, but it's also great at the same time. Like people are becoming more aware that you can just put stuff out and you mm -hmm. know, gather an audience. One thing that I've been kind of, I don't want to say struggling with, but kind of like just teeter tottering with in my mind. Um, I'm a big God guy. You know what I mean? Like I love God, mm -hmm. I love Jesus. Amazing. And, um, yeah. I feel I feel very convicted to put out music that glorifies Him. And the thing is, I started off not making Christian music, mm -hmm. and I got myself in the Spotify algorithm as like a not Christian artist. So I'm aligned with other artists who are like not Christian artists. So now I'm switching over, and I'm kind of like starting to put out Christian music. And um, it's still hip hop. It's still, you know, it's still like pop. It's still good music. It's just like has that message. But I'm, I, I've been a little concerned about the algorithm. And I talked to my mentor about this, Cam, and he's like, dude, F the algorithm, your heart and your inner alignment of what you're aligned mm -hmm. with is the algorithm. Like, just go off yep. that and everything will work out. What are your thoughts? You can't let an algorithm prevent you from your truth, man. You just can't, right. you right. know, <laughs> uh, as you were saying that, it's like, the last thing that the world needs is an artist like trying to be something that they're not because right. there's enough of that out there. There's too much of that out there. <laughs> and if, you know, if, if God is your truth and you're a religious person and that's the messages that you want to put out in the world that you truly believe in, then you need to do that hundred yeah. percent. I yeah. appreciate that, man. That mm -hmm. was something I would mean to ask you because you know, you're someone I definitely look up to in the music space and creator space. So I appreciate that. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Let's keep it rocking, man. Yeah. What are What are your thoughts on like networking? Because I know podcasting is a great way to network with people. Yeah. Um. Do you have any networking advice? And have you ever experienced like people being too friendly? And like, what are your thoughts around that? <laughs> um. Yeah, I have, I have a lot to say about this. I mean, I came from living in LA not too long ago. Uh, with with like Mike and Blue and and Versace, we lived in LA for six years. I want to say. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, you know, we're grateful for being there just because it's, it was such a hub for entertainment, for music and for, you know, networking and meeting people. But at the same time, like it was a very ego driven ecosystem there, the entertainment industry in Los Angeles and networking just became very superficial over there. And people like to talk about what they've accomplished rather than, you know, how they can have synergy with you and, and build with you. You know, it's a lot yeah. more ego driven about like, Oh, like, well, I work with this person and I've done this and I've accomplished this and I do this. And, uh, it's, that's not really like the type of vibe I want to be on when I network with people and the type of people I want to work with. Yeah. Not to say it was all like that, but it was, it was a lot of it. A lot of it was like that in LA. So, um, I, I'm glad that, you know, we don't really live there anymore. And I think a lot of the industry is going to start dispersing out to different cities rather than just being in Los Angeles. But, um, in the beginning years when I was just starting out, when I was 22 years old, or even before that, when I was still in college, I mean, I, I just would, I would just work with as many artists as possible and I'd, I'd collaborate with as many people as possible, uh, yeah. just because 
uh, although not every all of them were great matches uh from from my willingness to work with so many people i mean that's how i met mike uh he had two songs out and i shot him an email and i was a young producer and i said hey like i've worked with these few up and coming artists i think you're really dope here's some beats uh you know hope we can do some stuff together yeah and that's that's how my relationship started with him and it just started from an email uh on a whim he didn't have any fans yet he no one really knew who he was he had two one or two videos out so uh i just think like being being willing to to work with anybody not someone you know who's already made it or who already has a bunch of accolades uh just taking a chance on someone you really really like on a personal level and respect yeah. and you know it's um I, I can't give that more. I can't give more advice on that enough. Uh, collaboration with art, especially with people that you like, is it's so key. Rather than just doing things 100 percent yourself. So um, I would just. And where do you live? Where are you from? So I'm actually from Connecticut. Uh huh. Um, I now live in Florida for about seven years now. What part of Florida? Uh, I currently live in Brevard County, so it's like Sebastian, Melbourne, Palm Bay. Yeah. But um, I've done a lot of my music at studios in Orlando. Um, I saw you guys when you came to Orlando. I was at yeah. that show a couple Sweet. few years ago. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Florida, Florida kind of living it up, man. Yeah, I know it's different as an artist to collaborate because I, as a person behind the scenes who does like engineering and producing, it's easier to work with multiple artists. Yeah. And it's it's I get it's harder as an artist, but uh, you can't you can't build it alone. You have to find your mastermind group of people that can do it with you. So uh, for, sure. for an artist, I would just I would just collaborate work with as many producers, uh, engineers, whatever as possible and find, find someone who's the right match for you and, yeah. uh, and, and grow with them. Cause it's, it's just too hard and it's not worth it doing it by yourself. Right. No, I hear you, man. I'm definitely looking to like attract my tribe. Um, mm -hmm. and, and just have that. Cause like fellowship's big for me, man. Like, it's like, I want to work out together. I want to like eat together. I want to make music mm -hmm. together. Like just all that stuff is important. And I feel like that's, yeah. That's a really cool vibe that you guys have been able to create and you guys have your tribe. It's just like really exciting to to help people get their objectives, like just help people move forward in the way that yeah. they want. Yeah, you're networking for the right reasons and that's good. You want to you want to bring value to people. And yeah, that's, bring value. that's the whole that's the whole point. Yeah, I think that's why I I, I uh pursued so many creative avenues cuz I just wanted to be a helpful and create as much value for people as possible, you know, yeah. and, and the early years of working with Mike, I could, um, shoot videos and edit videos and record, you know, engineer vocals and produce beats. And it's like, well, he didn't have to search for five or six guys. It's like, I granted back then I wasn't very good at all those things, but I, uh, <laughs> you know, I was, I could, I could do it enough where I could be of value to a new artist. Yeah. One-stop shop, man. Are you a premier guy or a final cut pro guy? Uh, I'm both technically, but I've been gravitating more towards Final Cut Pro uh, specifically for things that are like small projects, like social media videos and stuff like that, just yeah. because uh, it's just a quicker workflow for me. And if yeah. you're doing a bigger project, uh, definitely Premiere is the way to go. Yeah, I'm a Premiere guy too. Like I edit a lot of videos, so it's cool to it's cool to be bilingual in the video editing world. Yeah, people shit on Final Cut, but I I'm just uh, I don't care I don't care what people think. It's like I I'm going to get the job done 3 times quicker than you no matter how skilled you are, you know, so I'm going to use Final Cut when I can. Final Cut has a lot of like like cool like graphic templates and stuff like that. Are you familiar with Motion Array? Um yeah, I I want to say I those are just like plugins for Final Cut, right? Or yeah, are they for any, has... anything? It has templates for like every single video editing software, like okay, great titles, transition. Oh yeah, oh yeah, no, I I definitely used them before. I I use a bunch of different companies for plugins, but I like Final Cut because it just like makes it really easy to 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 like buy a plugin and just start using it right out like right out of the gate. You know, they yeah. make it for idiots like <laughs> like me, <laughs> just use it like right away, and it looks like pretty professional. But if you want to like really get like really really get super professional with stuff or like officially, uh. Premiere is definitely the way to go, you know, like a hundred percent. Yeah. Dude. I love your, uh, your only Steve's commercials. Like when I'm watching the podcast, <laughs> like your little commercials that come on those, those are hilarious. They make my day, man. That's the, yeah, I'm glad it, I'm More glad beer, it. girls. <laughs> uh, for that commercial, I'm not going to lie. I copied it from South Park. That's uh, like a skit they did like 20 years ago. And, uh, granted it wasn't verbatim but like i it was the same concept more or less and i'm like i gotta do this for only steves dude that's amazing <laughs> the greatest the greatest great art is stolen man or whatever the quote is yeah no it's 
Uh, that's true. I, it's, it's hard to be original these days because too much stuff has been done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's great, man. That's great. Um, yeah, man. So I don't really have anything else. Um, I'm, I'm, I ran through my topic list and I'm just super thankful to have you here, man. Um, I would love to connect further one day, maybe do this again sometime. Yeah. And, uh, of course. and yeah, man, I'm excited. I'm going to make some clips on social and I'll send you some clips. What's your uh, show called? Via you podcast. Via you. And this, yeah. what, what episode is this? This is episode two. Episode two. That, right on, man. So when this, when this blows up, you tell me, you, you let them know that John Comer was one of your first guests. I certainly will, man. Thank you so I was, much. I was, I was with CJ from the jump. Let him know. Let's go, bro. Because, <laughs> dude, my, my name is Via CJ, my artist name. And mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. I stole that from Foley like years ago because he's by Foley. <laughs> and I was like, yo, Via CJ. <laughs> it's different enough. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> that was a long time ago. So, yeah, bro, I've always been a big supporter and I'm um, always continue to support you. Um, I love what you do. I love your squad. And uh, yeah, man, it's always going to be good energy over here. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you, man. I support you too. I, I hope you I hope you have me on the show again. Oh, well, let's do it, man. All right, man. I'll <laughs> talk to you, John Kilmer. All right, have a good rest of your day, brother. You too, brother. Yeah.